Uh, just to come and view what has happened here in the area of Moy River. We vehemently condemn the criminality that is happening here. People are going to lose a number of jobs and the investors are going to lose confidence in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. We wish to warn the criminals out there who are continuously perpetrating violence in the province of KwaZulu-Natal that we'll never to tolerate that and the perpetrators of violence are going to be uh, apprehended and they will face the might of the law in this province of KwaZulu-Natal. We have now combined a multidisciplinary law enforcement task team that is dealing with criminality that is happening here and we are really warning people that they must just stop this thing that is happening and we are also call, calling for restraint uh, on our people. They must be calm. We don't want to be known as a, a province that is having a lot of people that are perpetrating violence. We want to be known as a province that is promoting harmony, that is promoting peace, that is promoting prosperity. So we are really, really persuading our people to, to be calm in this situation. Thank you. That's uh, if I can no, Thank you very much. Uh, I think the fact that we are jointly deployed here as the, uh, the JCPS cluster and the economic cluster has a message in its own. From my side, we are very, very concerned about the impact on the economy of the province and therefore of the country. You all know this is the N3, which is a lifeblood from a logistics point of view uh, between the harbour and Gauteng and indeed the rest of indeed the rest of Africa. So we want to add our voice to the call for calm. Uh, the issues that are there that are of concern to people, uh, the president and the premier has stated that we share the pain of, of many of our people as as to what has what has happened, but we are very clear that the constitutional framework, the rule of law, uh, are sacrosanct. And there's a line between genuine protest, which we can understand and sympathize with, versus criminality of the type that we are seeing here in town, in Moy River, and in other parts of the province. We are pleased that the uh, security cluster has mobilized, has a plan, is doing its work. As we can see, trucks are, are moving on, on, on the N3 but we are not going to be under any illusion that the task is complete. The political leadership has been meeting nationally, we're meeting provincially. Uh, tomorrow we'll be having a meeting of the Provincial Economic Council. The Provincial Economic Council brings together business, uh, government, labor, and civil society to collate our reports and to further um, massify a single message, which is basically to our people, let's be calm. Yes, we may have issues, but there are processes for those to be dealt with. And uh, from the law enforcement side, we have both a constitutional duty, um, a legal duty, and indeed our duty to our people. From our side, from the economic cluster, the single biggest task is to rebuild our economy. And we can't be, we'll be dishonest if we're saying this has not taken us back. It has happened, we need to restore order and start to rebuild. Let me also say that economic transformation is central to our government's policy, nationally and provincially. I dare say that there is no other voice that has been as consistent or as passionate about economic transformation than our Premier, Premier Sishila, Sishila Zikalala. But what we're saying, we won't allow those who want to vulgarize economic transformation those who want to reduce economic transformation to looting, that we cannot accept. That's not in the interest of the province, that's not in the interest of the people, that's not in the interest of the hundreds of thousands of young people who want us to create job opportunities. Let me pause. Thank you very much. Uh, can we then uh, uh, take any questions from colleagues uh, before uh, Honorable MEC for any some other for us? In is, is uh, starting with you, Karinda Koke, uh, uh, in that order, and then we'll take the final round. Uh, MC, perhaps a question first for any colleague.
Um, do we know so far what is the cost of the damages um, to our various companies and our economy? And then, um, can we see if any, perhaps you can also tell us what has been, uh, in terms of the deployment on our roads for safety and securing around the protest, um, what has been the cost of gas for our department? Have you had to exceed your budget because of these protests to get our men on the ground, our men and women on the ground to secure areas? Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, another business? Okay. No, thank you for that. Look, we don't have a complete collation. Tomorrow at the Economic Council meeting, our social partners will, will come with detailed reports. But if we just look at the, you know, 33 trucks that were damaged or, or, or burnt, uh, shops that were looted, at this stage a conservative estimate would be 100 million rand, uh, a conservative estimate. But that would be collated uh, more thoroughly uh, between now and tomorrow. Okay, I might not have an actual figure, but uh, the, 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 the fact of the matter is that uh, we have decided to add shifts for our uh, road traffic uh, inspectorate. They were actually working on three shifts, but now they are working on four shifts. Uh, in other words, we're going to use more budget that was allocated for this particular purpose, for this uh, particular uh, criminality and uh, unrest that is happening in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. Commander Gope from ENCA, your critics will say you are arriving now after the effect. 24 hours, 48 hours is on the freeway. The strategic trade route has been blocked for almost more than 24 hours. Where have you been? Why are you arriving now? And did your law enforcement agencies sleep on the job where they caught Netflix? Because this is not for the first time that trucks are back here. You should have anticipated this. We knew about this protest. I'm not sure if you are amongst the critics or you are just reporting on behalf of critics. No, I think uh, it's very easy to have the wisdom of hindsight. Uh, yes, we expected trouble and uh, I, I think the widespread nature of it would have stretched our resources. Uh, but I think the, the South African police uh, services responded to the best of their their ability. I mean, it was uh, tactics, which I'm not going to describe because I don't want to give further credence to, to it. Uh, but the I think we, we ourselves have said to the police that we understand that the challenge here is 90% political, and uh, that work is being done as far as that is concerned, uh, but the police will do their side of the job. I don't think it's a, a, a kind of challenge that could have been managed completely uh, through an enforcement response. I think adequate. <laughs> Why are you only arriving now? Don't you think you have reacted in terms of showing this? We might, not, we might be arriving now as the political leadership, but our teams have been on the, on the ground ever since this thing happened. So we were in offices ensuring that there are plans. We were developing plans, and we have developed very clear plans that were discussed in the Provincial Executive Council even yesterday. They were... Uh, they were approved by the executive council and uh, we are we are really satisfied with what the provincial government has actually done regarding this but i think i need to add to you that uh, our work is not only being visible for the tv camera yes. the task is mobilizing motivating coordinating yes. on friday night for example i was up to very late in the night coordinating between the problems in corpsville which had nothing to do with the bigger problem uh, around the former president. That was an electricity problem, but the resources of the public order unit were stretched between here and that particular problem. So we were there up to very late coordinating between the various arms of government trying to uh, bring uh, solutions to the problem. Of course, some of the problems are difficult, are intractable, and uh, will not be an event. The solution will not be an event, will be a process, and we have to gear, up, gear ourselves up for that. Ayanda, the last one, Ayanda, then Karina. Ayanda, from the SDPC. The MEC plans to engage with the, the community here around Borova. It's not the first time that they actually have one on the rampage, looted stores and destroyed uh, trucks. Um, what are you plans to meet with the community? 
Indeed, uh, we will continuously engage the community through their leaders, because there are leaders here. Uh, this thing has, has been happening for quite a long time, and we are condemning it as the provincial government of KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, as I uh, alluded earlier on, we will lose investors. The, the people of this area will also lose their jobs if they, they continue doing this. So we will continue uh, engaging them. Yes. If I may add, I think we must be honest and say that the disaster regulations, uh, the COVID-19 disaster uh, declaration and the regulations, are obviously preventing mass gatherings. So we have to find new ways of communicating with our people. Now, of course, we do so with, I think the mayor is going to join us, join us soon. I personally have been speaking to a councillor from this particular area. His job is to communicate to the ward committees and bring the message to the ground. But part of the, the decisions of the meetings that are taking place uh, today and into this evening will be to come out with a community engagement program and format that is compliant with the disaster regulations. COVID-19 doesn't go away because we have this challenge. So we have to keep our eye on that ball as well. Thank you very much. Final question from me from NEC. We know that uh, Monday tomorrow is a big day politically because the rescission application is back in court. We're anticipating more protests, in fact, more volatile protests. What are your plans on the ground in terms of securing parts of the world? We actually cannot divulge too much uh, about the security issues, but we are ready as the province of KwaZulu-Natal to intervene as and when it becomes uh, necessary for us to do that. But we are calling for calm, we are calling for restraint. Our people should know that there is not even one single insane person uh, who actually celebrates what has happened to uh, former President uh, Zuma. Uh, but uh, we, we are saying people should understand uh, what has happened. So uh, violence, public violence, is not going to solve any problem in this province of Kwazulu-Natal.